Wild Talents by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 24i, and, not wanting to write three or four hundred pages upon this subject, I shall not go much into records of professional rascals, or faithful and devoted scientists, who have exploited, or have tried to minister unto, the desire of old codgers to caper. I take from the New York Evening Post, April 12, 1928, an account of discoveries of major importance to the science of rejuvenation, as announced in Berlin by Professor Steinock to the annual Congress of German Surgeons. Professor Steinock's announcement was that he had discovered the secret of rejuvenation in uses of the pituitary gland. If any reader isn't quite sure where the pituitary is, I remind him that it is connected with the fundibulum. It is in a part of the body that is most profoundly engaged in sex relations. It is in the brain. Dr. Stein announced that, with 12 injections of pituitary serum in senile rats, he had restored their failing appetites, induced a new growth of hair, rejuvenated all bodily functions, and had generally transformed ailing, or half-dead, creatures into youthful animals. There is witchcraft in science. If bald old rats have turned young and hairy, if dogs, fed on coal products, have astonishingly fattened, if tens of thousands of mice and guinea pigs have magically gone fat, or gone thin, in the presence of experimenters, if, in not all these cases has the treacherous, or perhaps kind-hearted, assistant slipped, say, the brisk and hairy young rat into the place of the decrepit old codger, or has not, in secret rascality, or benevolence, meatly supplemented the fare of dogs supposed to be thriving upon coal products, if not in all these cases have eminent trappers lied snares for dollars, my pseudo-conclusion, or acceptance, which is as far as I can go in the fiction that we're living, is that some of these announcements have been pretty nearly faithful report of occurrences, and that, by witchcraft, or in response to intense desires of experimenters, senile rats have lost the compensations of old age, and have suffered again the tormenting restlessness of youth, all this by witchcraft, and not by injections that in themselves could have no more of a rejuvenating effect upon either rats or humans, than upon mummies. But, if Professor Steinock, by witchcraft, or by the effects of belief, did grow hair upon the bald skin of a rat, to say nothing of the more frolicsome effects of his practices, how comes it that he was not equally successful with the human subjects of his sorcery? Today the Steinock treatment stands discredited. Especially destructive have been Dr. Alexis Carroll's attacks upon it. It may be that the professor's own greed defeated him. It may be that he failed, because he dissipated his sorcery among many customers.